Okay, so in this video, what I wanna do is explain to you what exactly is an extraneous solution and how do we go about finding them. Now, extraneous solutions are just solutions to an equation, but not the original equation. So what I have up here is I have two rational expressions and we're gonna go ahead and follow some steps on solving rational equations. Now, when we wanna solve a rational equation, we wanna get the variable off the denominator, right? From the very beginning of learning how to solve equations, we know that to solve for x or whatever your variable is, it has to be off the denominator. So to get my variable off the denominator, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify my LCD. And you can see here that my denominator, my least common denominator, is going to be x minus three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything by x minus three, right? Because again, remember the properties of equalities. Whatever you do on the left side, you have to go and do on the right side. And as long as you approve or multiply everything times x minus three, you are producing what we call an equivalent equation. It's not gonna be changing the value of the equation. Now by doing this, what happens is, I'm gonna have an x times x minus three. The x minus threes though are gonna divide out, right? Because te technically, you're gonna have this, those will divide out, and then over here, that would divide out. So you're just gonna be left with a four x is equal to 12. Now what's happened here is I have now just rewritten my rational equation as an equation with no variables in the denominator. Now I was about to say linear, but it's not a linear equation because when you multiply this, what happens is you're actually gonna get a quadratic equation. Now, to solve a quadratic equation, when we have more than one variable, we want to get our variables to the side and set it equal to zero. So therefore, we can look to factoring or using quadratic formula. So now you can see here, we have this quadratic equation. Now, when solving a quadratic equation, we know that we're looking for two solutions or a solution repeated. That might be different than our original equation, right? So when I go and solve this, first we wanna to look to factoring and I can see that this x plus four times x minus three is going to work. And therefore now I can apply the zero product property to go ahead and solve here. So now I found two solutions. But again, I want you to think about these two solutions in isolation, right? This is a separate problem all about itself. We're solving a quadratic. We have two solutions, which is exactly what we're looking for. However, we need to remember what we, were, what we originally were trying to do. We were originally trying to solve the solutions to this equation. And what we notice is when you plug these equations, if you remember when we solve the equations, you find your answer, you plug it back into the original equation. When we plug our solutions back into the original equation, we plug three in for x, we get zero. And we cannot divide by zero. Right? So therefore, this is what we call an extraneous solution. It's a solution to an equation, right? Which it is, but it's not a solution to your original equation. And that's what extraneous means. So let's just go and take a look at another example. Again, you can see, well, we have the same denominator. So let's just multiply by x minus three times everything again. And when doing that, I'm gonna get a three times x minus three plus two equals two. Right? So now, by doing this, I have actually created a linear equation. Distributed property, 3x minus 9 plus 2 equals 2. 3x minus is going to be minus 7 equals 2. Add 7. 3x equals 9. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 3. Now, in this case, I only had one answer, one solution. And my one solution was extraneous because when I plug 3 back into my original equation, it is not a solution. Right? That does not make the equation true because what we're going to have is an undefined value. So therefore, this is extraneous. And when we only have one extraneous solution, then overall for your equation, you have no solution. And it makes a whole bunch of sense as well because if you look at this original equation, these are exactly the same. Right? I'm just adding a 3. So of course, if these are supposed to be equal to each other, right, and then you add a 3, they're never going to be equal on that side. So hopefully that helped you out with the extraneous solutions. I think the main thing is you gotta practice working on through more problems. Down in the playlist below, I have many more examples for you to solve rational equations and be able to identify your extraneous solutions. I'll see you there.